And we're here today with His Excellency, the Secretary General of OPEC, Mr. Bahamut Markindo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We look at the oil outlook, the world oil outlook that uh, has become an event here at ADIPEC, which we're just delighted about too. But talk to us a little bit about the main findings when you look at the future of oil and gas and hydrocarbons for this industry. The long and short of it, Etna, in our outlook, uh, this wall will continue to be thirsty for energy, for oil and gas, for all other sources of energy. In our findings, all the sources of energy, including oil and gas, will be required by people on this planet for their daily lives, for growth, for development. These sources of energy, oil and gas, that is responsible for the growth, for the development, and the current prosperity that we see around the world, will continue to play a very constructive role in an environmentally friendly manner in the years to come. And of course, the big focus is on decarbonizing. I think sometimes the message out there, you know, might be sounding a bit confusing. We can't turn the taps off right now. And the need for oil and gas right now, I think, is essential. And also to clean it up. I think this is what everybody wants. You are quite correct. Uh, the challenge before humanity now is how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that have been impacting on our climate. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, and many other reputable scientific institutions have told us times without number in their research and findings that the global community uh, should deploy their resources, their ingenuity, come up with policy measures, projects and programs uh, to, to address greenhouse gas emissions and the oil and gas industry is no exception. This industry has the capacity, has the resources, and the innovative mind uh, to rise to the challenge. What we need the world to understand is that this industry must be part of the solution uh, to climate change. We are no climate deniers, and we are ready to play our part in ensuring that the outcome of the Glasgow COP26 talks and the climate pact that came out of Glasgow is comprehensively uh, uh, in an inclusive and fair manner implemented by all parties, including our member countries. And quickly, I know you're very busy, but before you go, you're always welcome here. We're delighted to see you at ADIPEC. It's very important to have you here. For you, how important is this gathering? Well, ADIPEC has become a global forum, especially for our industry, where the industry meets every year uh, to take stock and to share, compare notes, uh, to discuss strategies, on the competitiveness of not only oil and gas, but the technologies and the industries that are springing up uh, from within this industry. But this year, ADIPEC has attained uh, a special status, uh, coming almost back to back with COP26. Uh, uh, many of us uh, came straight from Glasgow to Abu Dhabi, and we found this forum uh, not only timely, uh, but the most conducive uh, forum uh, where the world uh, meets to discuss the outcome of Glasgow, to brainstorm on the outcome of Glasgow, to carry out a post-mortem of the climate pact that came out of Glasgow. And so this year it's unique. And I want to use this opportunity on behalf of OPEC uh, to congratulate the United Arab Emirates the Ministry of Energy and the able leadership of my friend uh, Mohammed Suhail Al Mazrui and his excellent team uh, for ensuring that uh, we have once again raised the bar and signal uh, the end of this pandemic.